Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, can I have your attention because this is over analyzed adventures. Yeah, there's no shiny intro for this series. Anyway, let's cut to the chase and talk about a game that's pure liquid adventure game cocaine if I've ever seen it. And that's Dropsy the Clown. A fantastic little indie gem that just released today as of this recording. So yeah, these are some fresh hot takes for a fresh hot new adventure game. And I should point out before we get started that I won't be able to play any of the fantastic in-game music for you guys because it turns out the right to Holder, or at least the studio that owns the rights to these songs, is flagging every video on YouTube that they can. So rather than risk it, I'm just going to cut it out so it'll be a bit quiet. And I may end up putting some YouTube-approved music in it, but just bear in mind, any of the jams you hear in this little overanalyzed adventure series is not the actual in-game music. So let's cut to the chase and get to the in-game, I guess. Oh yeah, I should point out right now that there is no spoken dialogue in this game. Everything's told via charades and pictures. So allow me to inform you of the backstory to this title. We're Dropsy the Clown. We're a clown. We hang out with other clowns. And as you can see in the intro, this blue-haired girl right here, she died when the big top burned to the ground. And we sad about it because, well, she's dead. And that's our backstory, guys. So let's cut to the game. Well, it looks like we died and have gone to hell. I'm not entirely sure if this is a flashback, a nightmare, or just something trippy to look at to get you accustomed to the bizarre things that are going to be going on visually in this game. There's really nothing you can do here other than click on this woman and what looks like baby version of you. She disappears, so I'm sure there's some symbolism there. And oh yeah, here's a terrifying mouth that ends the dream sequence. Oh yeah, that's going to happen a fair bit, actually. So our hero awakens, and oh look, it's our little doggy buddy here. And its mouth is covered in, well, it looks like blood, but I'm sure it's just delightful clown makeup. Because this is a clown dog, right? Right? This ain't some Cujo stuff, is it? Anyway, what I should point out at this point is that our little doggy buddy also serves as the, I guess, item detector? Anyway, the dog just kind of stops and makes that... <laughs> Noise in front of things that are important. That's it. I don't know what to call it. I guess it's kind of like doggy hotspot detection. Oh no, we can't get past this, I guess, bird thing. As you can clearly see in the pictures it's drawing us, it hungry. So this is our first puzzle. We gotta find food. And lo and behold, the refrigerator has food. It's like Twinkies. And we give it to the bird and I guess the bird eats Twinkies because now it's cool. <laughs> My god, his bones must be made of jello. Oh hey, look, it's the only other clown in this universe that I'm aware of. And I guess it's our... Is it our father? Is it our boss? I'm not really sure of the relationship here. Yeah, this is kind of like the tutorial here. We can hug people in this game. Let's hugging people make people happy, damn it. Anyway, to get you up to speed, because it's just a bunch of tutorial stuff, honestly, our little clown friend here needs to make his way over to the graveyard, because it's the birthday of the dead blue girl from the intro, who I'm assuming burned alive when the big top burned down, or something like that. So yeah, we gotta find her a gift, and sure enough, we've already found it earlier on in the video. It was that picture that we picked up in our bedroom. And oh yeah, our dog wants to get her a gift. He can actually dig up stuff and it's a mechanic you have to use a few times in this game and oh it's a sock. How delightful. So our little clown friend here takes a delightful walk in the woods and stumbles upon a sad tree. Ah uh, yes, but our friend here is a tree hugger. Oh isn't that just delightful? I wonder how the children will react to him. Wow, I mean, I can't say I'm not surprised, but seriously, kid, that's, that's a bit dramatic. Maybe he just watched it. But anyway, this little girl here doesn't seem terrified of the clown at all. Probably because she's so grief-stricken over the fact that her little flower's dead. Yeah. That's another mechanic of this game. You try to make sad people happy. Because you're a happy-go-lucky clown. It's right there in your face. Yeah, that's a happy face right there, all right. So our hero makes his way to the graveyard where he finds an incredibly pixelated mm -hmm. rose that he needs. 
Actually, it's for the little girl. Oh. Now, why is this rose so pixelated? I don't know. Maybe it thinks it's in a Japanese porno or something. Pixelated roses aside, we just leave our gifts on the gravestone and then our doggies like, yo, let's go home. And yeah, that's pretty much what we do. Although along the way, we do fix the girl's rose with the pixelated porno rose. Yay, I wonder how she'll respond to it. Oh, oh, she's, she's thanking Jesus for it. Yeah, all right. At least we got a hug out of it. And that's all this game's about. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the game's main plot now. Yeah, you saw that, right? A big fat chicken thing stole, I think it's a wheel? From our clown buddy? Naturally, we gotta get the wheel back for him. But first, we have to sleep, because, you know, it's dark. Yeah, there is an actual day-night cycle in this game, and it does affect who's where and where you can go and what you can do, like most day-night cycles in games or in real life. Oh, look, a delightfully trippy dream sequence with some really awesome kind of, like, punk rock playing in the background. But unfortunately, you don't get to hear any of that. So I'll just try my best to recreate this scene using what resources I have available, namely my mouth. Basically, imagine there's like kind of like some punk rock shredding, like, wow, wow, wow. And then there's like a creepy female voice going, ba, 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 ba. And as you get closer to the main room, it gets louder and louder and it goes, ba, 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 and then, ba, and then you get eaten. What? I'm sorry, I'm trying to deal with my limited resources here. Oh, right, we still have to get the wheel from the bird, and oh, hey, here's the bird, and there's a wheel. Unfortunately, our little noodle arms can't reach it. Although we can communicate with the bird, we just can't ask it to be like, yo, give us the wheel, you stole it, you jerk. We gave you a Twinkie earlier, I thought we were friends. So obviously, there's some puzzling to be had here. Well, let's just cut to the chase and show you what you have to do. You gotta hug a man in a chicken outfit. And naturally, this really pisses him off, so... He goes and tells his boss, and they yell at each other, and it's like, Hey, I pay you money, and the guy's like, A creepy clown hugged me, that's terrifying. And then, well, you wait for him to leave, and then, yeah, you hug him again. And apparently, this guy is so against having his personal space violated, he just storms off. Then you get a chicken head, which you can wear in front of the bird, and the bird's pretty dumb, and simultaneously strong enough to fly you up to its nest, and you can get the tire. And hey, puzzle solved, guys. So with our clown buddy helped out, we now get a nice scenic ride on the back of his motorcycle to like a junkyard king. I have to admit, the pixel art in this game is gorgeous. The big old sprites, the universe, the use of color, it's, it's eye candy. Yeah, sure, it's all kind of bizarre, but that only helps it, I feel. So hey, let's just enjoy the ride together with some YouTube allowed music. So our poor clown buddy here is sick as a dog, and this king guy's just a prick who's just making a bunch of noise. He can't do anything with him, so you have to kind of go behind him and play around in the junkyard. I'm not exactly sure what that thing's supposed to be. It looks a bit like a run out of Ren and Stimpy one a bit feral. And it's hungry. 
and we gotta feed it because otherwise it's going to eat our mouse bud over there. You don't know yet, but that poor mouse in the background that's really beating its heart hard is our friend, and he needs to be saved. This is a very, very tense situation. Fortunately, we can find what we need in the other room with our doggy buddy. Yep, there's a chest here, and hey, there's a key. And a copy of Atlas Shrugs. Oh boy, this junkyard king's a libertarian. So we unlock the libertarian's refrigerator because like a true libertarian, God forbid anyone has equal access to the essentials without paying for it. Also, I feel like I should point out, I'm kind of convinced that in this universe, the only thing that exists to eat are sandwiches, ice cream, and Twinkies. Sounds like a fifth grader's dream. But anyway, you gotta lure Ren by feeding him Twinkies until eventually you can access his little junkyard claw thingies. And yeah, it's a lot of back and forth, and eventually you knock off a tub, and hey, you got him, and you save your mouse buddy god damn it i want to give this clown a hug i know he's terrifying looking but he's so likable and lovable and he's so sweet he'd probably smell really weird and it'd feel like hugging a waterbed but still he's so damn likable you know, I'm very impressed with this game. For having no written or spoken dialogue, it is able to convey emotions that most games can never even achieve. Yeah, it's kind of cutesy and a bit reminiscent of Barney, but god damn it, they did a good job here. Hats off to designers, you achieve something here that you don't see very often in games. And that's being able to convey emotions without being, well, too sentimental or sappy. There's a kind of sincerity to this game that makes this character really likable. I'm not supposed to like this clown. I'm not supposed to like anything. I'm pixelated. Anyway, we saved the mouse, so now we have another playable character besides the dog, and that's, well, the mouse. And as you can imagine, the mouse can get into tiny little spaces, which is going to become very useful very soon because, oh dear, our clown buddy, he's really damn sick. He don't look so hot, and there's no way we can afford medicine because when we go to the hospital, they're like, yeah, give us money, and we a clown. We ain't got no money. God damn it, look at that face right there. Look at the sadness in his eyes. We're gonna fix your buddy up, man. We're gonna fix him up real good. Actually, it's not too hard. You have to go to the... I don't know what it is. I call it the magical Twinkie land because it's where they make these Twinkie things that appear to have some magical properties like they restore youth and I don't know what else. But hey, it's the only lead we got and we're desperate. So we send it the mouse to, I guess, I don't know, reenact Mission Impossible? except with a mouse and a lot less lasers. So yeah, you have to do this at night, which is why the day-night cycle is important, I suppose. Although they could have just had something that would trigger the event and then it became night. Never mind, it doesn't matter. What does matter, though, is that our mouse buddy unlocked the door and now we can come in. But oh, wait, we still have to get past another locked door. So we send in our mouse buddy and oh my god, there's robots with lasers in here. But like in most puzzle games that don't feature any combat, when you're faced with combat, the aggressor is a part of the puzzle. Ooh, that sounded pretentious right there. But anyway, there's a little delay between when they shoot and where they're shooting, so you're gonna have them shoot, say, oh, a lock off the door, and then had them shoot down the barricade that's protecting the magical healing Twinkie that we're after, that's supposed to heal everything, based on advertisements we see all over town. Oh yeah, but don't forget to turn the guards modes over from shooting to martini glasses. Sounds a bit like an interesting design choice there. Like, hey, we're assassin guard bots, but we're also drunks? Hey, I'm not the guy who made these robots. But anyway, now that the robots are getting a little bit tanked, we can now send in our clown buddy to get the magical healing Twinkie of, I don't know, healing, and give it to our sick clown friend. Surely that will fix him, right, game? Oh, it sounds like someone's at the door. We better go answer it. And we should check on our buddy who's looking. Oh, oh no, he just got fat. Oh, I guess I can't trust the new Twinkies advertising. Oh man, the fuzz pinched us. Well, I guess we shouldn't be too surprised. After all, they have video surveillance of us stealing the magical Twinkie. Oh, well. Anyway, this delicate guy walking in, he's the owner of the magical Twinkie factory. And he has a proposition for us. If we help him out, he'll help our clown buddy. And he won't press charges, I guess. So that sounds like a pretty sweet deal. We just gotta help out some mysterious 
guy who makes magical Twinkies. I'm sure there's nothing sinister at all behind any of these guys' motivations. No, no, no. He's just a nice dude who wants to help out a couple of clowns down on their luck. So after that's all done and sorted, we go outside and we're interrupted by our squirrel buddy informing us that our bird buddy needs a hand. So we go meet the bird in the middle of the woods and he's like, yo, one of my friends is in a box up here on the map. Please save him. And we eventually will. But first we have to go meet the mysterious industrialist who's making Twinkies and our bird buddy will come along. And as you can imagine, he has special powers, namely the gift of flight, which will come in useful later on. But first we have to get our ID made by this lovely lady. Oh yeah, looking good. And then we give her a hug because she was sad. Aww, we're just so damn sweet. Well, let's go meet the mysterious Twinkie man. He wants to build a circus, and our circus was burned down, so... Yeah, obviously we should align with him, right? Nothing sinister sounding at all with any of this. Oh, and he'll give us money so our guy can get better? Oh, he's too generous and too kind. <gasps> he'll even make it so the children will love us. How he's gonna pull that one off? I don't know. Maybe he'll cover us in candy. And the deal is sealed with a hug. Oh, Dropsy, don't you ever change. So we're working for the man now. And we'll see what shenanigans Dropsy and I get into next time on Overanalyze Adventures. Have a good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening. And god damn, is this not the creepiest but sweetest game you've ever seen.